It's time to go beyond the headlines Cause I don't put in overtime just so I can headline Okay, now it's Fox Sports, I'm live with Renee Going hard every day, sports rapping every play Different segments for your favorites Coming at you daily with positive vibes Yeah, we some game changers Basketball, football, soccer With different interviews, you never know who may pop up Listen, <laughs> only on Beyond the Headlines This is Beyond the Headlines <laughs> Only on beyond the headlines, this is beyond the headlines. <laughs> Only on beyond the headlines, this is beyond the headlines. We're Renee Washington. This week, joining us to talk about his basketball career and more is Daryl Reynolds, Villanova basketball alum, professional basketball player overseas, and host of Stay Tuned with D Ray. D Ray, welcome to the show. What's going on with you? Not much. I'm glad to have you here because I would, I'm so excited to get your perspective and experiences and, and so much more. So you got to be part of one of the greatest moments in NCAA history across all sports, in my opinion. Back in April 2016, when you guys won uh, the NCAA championship, Chris Jenkins hits a buzzer beater, the only buzzer beater ever in NCAA history. The, and the world went crazy. I mean, I, I don't where I was watching from, we were screaming. I mean, talk to me about that experience and just kind of the, the excitement around winning the first championship for Villanova in over 30 years, the second ever in program history, and being a part of that. I can only imagine. It was, it was crazy. Um, I think that the craziest part of the entire experience is, like, We've all, like, played with Chris long enough so we knew the way he stepped into that shot it was going in. Like, we all talked about it afterwards. It was, like, that moment. It felt like forever um, <laughs> in those moments, like, leading up to him uh, stepping into it and actually going in. It felt like it was, like, a lifetime. But, no, nah, it was like we all knew it was going to go in. Um, just like I said, just seeing the way he shot it. It took a second. Like, because the cannon went off so quickly, we really expected – uh, maybe them review it or something like that, but because that cannon had went off so quickly, we just we uh we all ran up there pretty quick. Yeah. One second, that so. that was my next question. If you like, if you guys knew it was going in, and now like I'm sure it's something you still talk about to this day with people. Um, but when uh, you when you guys beat UNC like that, that was just it was incredible. What was kind of like? I'm sorry, Villanova campus was insane. I know all of, like, Philly was insane. But um, for you to be alongside your teammates in that moment and moving forward, talk me through that experience. You know, all your hard work paid off. You guys won a championship. Confetti's flying in the air and just being a part of such a historic moment. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. It was it was bittersweet. Um, okay. And I hate to be pessimistic about it, but it was the fact that we were juniors, you know, me, Chris, and Josh yeah. were juniors at that point. So we knew, oh, man, you know, it was like, it was awesome. It was great, you know, it happened. And then it was this moment of like, oh, damn, we have to come back. Um, <laughs> and not necessarily come back and do it again, but we just understood, like, it's never going to be the same, you know. And it's one thing for that to kind of be, like, you know, I was talking about, uh, you know, Ar- Brian Arciacano, Daniel Chefu, Patrick Farrell, Henry Lowe, Kevin Rafferty. Uh, all those guys, that was it. That was the, that was their that was their mountain top. Yeah. Like once they, after that, that was it. They were done with college, and that was like their fondest memory. For us, it was like, all right, we have to go through this, and now come back. And um, to be quite honest, it was a it was it was a weird space because we couldn't. It was like you couldn't really tell if it was a rooting for if people were necessarily rooting for at that point, or it was rooting to see you know how long it would last until it failed. Like for example, it's one paper that uh, had a picture of me and Josh kind of taking a silly picture up at the, the Big East tournament. It was a Philadelphia paper, and it said, uh, the hangover, question mark. Mm. And I was just like, oh, God. Like, I, just, I couldn't help but feel like a, a headline like that was kind of like, you know, it's kind of like people show up for the Titanic. It's like some people are going to see, you know, all right, I want to see this ship sail. Some people are like, I want to see it fail. You know what I mean? Like, you never know what people's true intentions. So it put us in a weird space on the bitter side, but the sweet side of it was in the same way. Life was never the same. Um, we got right. back to campus. We were welcomed throughout the city. The city were, were welcomed us in a different way. Um, kind of the whole stigma of Villanova not being a Philly school kind of <laughs> evaporated over those couple months. But it was great. The parade was great. Campus life was 
a lot different, but it was fun. You know, it was a buzz that was going on around in the city, and it kind of it played right into the Sixers' success. I'm not saying like, we were responsible for it, but it was all, like, around the same time. The Sixers started to get good. Um, the Eagles won a championship, obviously, the following year. So, you know, it was nice. It was nice to see everything kind of coming together at once and that we were kind of the ones that – I'm not going to say started. I would never say that, but we were there for the early days of that. So it was nice. Yeah, that you you say a lot of things that really stand out to me, and one being the fact that, you know, when you win a championship or when you do well in anything, you just set the bar higher. So winning an NCAA championship, that's the highest you can go. I mean, the only thing better would be to, I guess, go undefeated and win a championship. Like, there's there's not much more you could do once you've won an NCAA championship. So it is kind of like you have people that are, you know, waiting on your downfall, so to speak. You know, they're they're yeah. they're trying to see how you bounce back the next year. Plus, you guys at Villanova were located, and I went to LaSalle, so I was definitely and have always been part of the people that are like, Villanova yeah. is kind of Philly. Like, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, everybody no, in get... Philly fully embraced you then. <laughs> nah, that you was, were that Philly. Definitely, that was right. I was about to say, I'm from South Philly. I, um I graduated my last two years of high school. I went to my first high school with Martin Luther King up in uh, West Oak Lane. My last two years, I went to Law oh, Mary, moved okay. out to Ballard Kenwood. So I have an aces. for me, like, to, yeah, exactly. So to stop <laughs> hearing the whole, oh, he's not a Philly guy and it's not a Philly school thing was probably the most rewarding part for me, selfishly. Mm. But at the end of the day, like I said, it was great. It was great to do it, first and foremost, for Villanova. Um, but then, you know, for the people in the city that did embrace us, it was great. And it was just one of those things that it, it immediately turned into it wasn't our championship. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was Philly's championship. And that's what that's what we love. You know what I mean? Like that we could go down Penn's Landing or somewhere like that. You would, you know, hear people congratulate you for it. People with temple gear on saying, man, y'all did right. the city. That was cool. You know, that was, to, to, that was not to sound corny, but they talk about brotherly love. It's like, all right, it's good to see that it actually exists, you know. Right, and that's something that regardless who you're, what school you represent in Philly, to see a Philly school go out and win a championship, that makes sense. It's kind of like you did it, you know, you're one of us, and you went out and won, you know. And then on top of that, Villanova has historically been, for men's basketball, a top program, you know, for years. You look back, you guys have won now three championships, you know, since you turned around and won again in 2018. You've been in six Final Fours. You have the eighth highest most NCAA tournament appearances in in men's basketball. I mean, what made you, you talk about growing up in South Philly and then going to Lower Marion, being a Philly native, what made you really want to go to Villanova in the first place? You know, I know the the accolades aside, you get to play with Coach Jay Wright, you get to be a part of, a big program, but what is it about Villanova basketball now that you've gone through the recruiting process as a player and even as a coach with Villanova helping out from, from that standpoint, what is it that sets Villanova apart to be so accomplished? Um, In your opinion. <laughs> no, 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 no. I got you. I got you. Quite frankly, I had no intentions of going there. I, I will, I've openly said this a few times. I was a Temple guy. Oh. I was a Temple ah, guy. Okay. I, I, was very, I, I had several family ties there. Um, like I said, my first high school was Martin Luther King, West Oak Lane. So you go, you know, 15 minutes down down Broad Street, and you're you're right at Temple. I was a Temple guy, and um, I was never. I, I love Nova. I have respect for it, but I knew it as Guard University. So you know, it really it didn't feel like the place for me when I was in high school. I took a year of prep school up in Boston and Worcester Academy, and my last four schools were Villanova, Seton Hall, uh, South Carolina, and Utah, and when I go on the visits, you know, like the, the recruiting process, any any college kid will tell you, and anybody who's out of college, hopefully they have the wherewithal to tell you that it's a bunch of whining and dining, you know, it's, and there's nothing mm. wrong with that. That's part of the game. It has to be played, but it's a bunch of whining and dining. It's coaches telling you, you know, what's uh, what they're going to do for you and what the plan is going to be for you, and, you know, rarely ever do you hear what you're giving back. You know what I mean? And I think that's right. a very underrated part of um, – in the college. It's like, all right, the school is going to offer you this, that, and the third. What is the school expecting from you in return? You know what I mean? And me and Coach Wright, uh, which was actually one of my last visits, when me and him first had our full-length conversation, it was in a dining hall on campus. So, you know, we went to the fancy dinner at that point, but me and him sat down at the dining hall on campus, had lunch together, and we talked about everything but basketball. 
Oh, and wow. talked about giving back, talked about service and others. And I left that conversation. I told my mother, I was like, this is where I want to go. You know what I mean? This is who I want to be under, not so much as a coach, um, but as a man. You know, I, I think as a man, I, I saw, thank God I saw it very early on, he could see full circle. You know what I mean? Like everybody could tell you, oh, yeah, we're going to let you shoot the three, and we're going to let you do this and do that. Right, right. You. That, that's great. What happens if my knee blows out? You know, what do you expect me when I'm off the court? And those were all the things that we talked about. They actually had a presentation that focused on um, life after basketball and throwing over the network and different guys who had, you know, necessarily hadn't worked out with the NBA or overseas and what they were doing and, and things like that. And once I got a feel for that and that family feel, and you hear that thrown around a lot in sports, but once I saw that that was legitimate and that was honestly his scheme and how he wanted that program to be set up, um, and I got to see it even more as a coach this year, as you said. I was like, this is where I want to be. And I was one of those guys that blew my knee. I tore at LaSalle of all places, the irony. <laughs> Sorry. At LaSalle of all places. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, it, ain't, it ain't nobody's fault. But whoever whoever finished the floor that day did a great job at uh at Oh, jeez. Because I went up for a layup, got knocked out of the air. I came down my leg, got caught, and I tore my knee all over. ACL, mm. LCL, PCL. Ouch. And I ripped off my hamstring. And quite frankly, as of right now, my career is over. Um, right. And I can't say that I would be doing as well as I'm doing if I didn't go to Nova. You know what I mean? I had a coach that cared about me. Me and him were talking about my plans for media and stuff like that. He offered me a job on the spot as director of player development. You know what I mean? So that's that's why I chose Nova for the, the, the family feeling that uh, I'm, I'm proud to say is, is very real. You know, you have to pay dues and things like that. And like I said, you have to give a lot to give, get a lot, but it's, it's been worth it, you know. Wow, wow. No, that makes complete sense. And I think something you hit on with your dis- conversation with Coach Wright, you know, when you were just going through the recruiting process and you still feel that same support and, and commitment and, and love t- to this day as an alumni, I mean, Talk to me about Coach Wright because his his name is a household name. You know, I saw him doing – he was doing a commercial, but he's honestly – when you think of college basketball, you think of John Calipari, Calipari with Kentucky. You think of Coach K with Duke. You think of Boheim with Syracuse. You think of Jay Wright with Villanova. Like, he's one of the most recognized and honestly uh, well-liked, not even just well-known, but well-liked coaches. So, And you've had the yeah. chance to, to work under him as a player, as a coach for years now. And you talk about developing as a man, you know, not everyone gets that experience. What is it like being, you know, so close with Coach Dayray and and how he has helped yourself as well as your teammates, whether they go to the NBA, whether they go overseas like you did, whether they just go and and get a corporate job and become, you know, part of corporate America. How has he really helped, Mm -hmm. in your opinion, with getting his players to that next step? Um, he's one of those people that feels though if I can't help you, I'm gonna put you in contact with somebody that can. Um, mm. But with that being said, he can he can help in a ton of ways. Like you said, as far as guys being done their careers, guiding them through their basketball careers. You know, like Kyle Lowry was, he had an injury, but he was supposed to be on the USA team. And him and Coach had you know spoke numerous times of things in and out of sports. A lot of his lessons tie into real life. You know, a lot of his basketball lessons. And I think that's the beauty of sports. Um, in so many ways, the sports has a has a very – the same way, like, superhero stories can show very real human emotions, sports has mm-hmm. a way of tying in very real and fundamental life lessons, you know, discipline, um, you know, staying on top of, uh, of your work, putting work first and things like that, taking care of the people who take care of you, a team, work atmosphere. And that's why it's funny if you look at the job force nowadays, so many jobs are trending towards hiring athletes because they that's understand so in today's workforce. You know, you have to be able to, to work in teams and work with people and understand and communicate, things like that. So a lot of jobs are, are gearing towards that um, and finding athletes. And like I said, sports has always done that. But he he seems to always, like I watch, you know, some of his old interviews or when I, you know, hear about his coaching scheme way back when from his players who come way before me, even his Hofstra days, you know, or his assistant mm-hmm. coaching days at Nova. You want to go back, you know, this is the coaching days at UNLV. If I, I talk to those guys, and he always seems to have a feel for that. You know, I feel like that's something he came here with, and um, he's definitely going to leave here with it. But it's just that is his – you know, every coach has an extension to what they can help their guys outside of, uh, outside of the game and what they expect from those guys outside of the game. And his is 
being a stand-up man uh, and a father uh, and a brother and a son, first of all, and then you're a good player. You know what I mean? That he, right. He that if you take care of those things, then you'll be a good player. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not about to paint him out to be some some angel. You know, he, he, <laughs> he's human, but he's, a, he's an extraordinary human. He's an extraordinary human being. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> you know what? Something that really stands out that I love that you've been hitting on, that, like I'm reading between the lines, is at Villanova, especially, you know, with Coach Day Wright, but even just the way that – that everything is set up around the basketball program. You're not cutting corners. You're going, I'm going to class on the Subin. You're, go, you know, you're yeah. taking classes that are going to prepare you for whatever you want to do next. You know, you, you're learning life lessons. It's more than just basketball, which unfortunately not yeah. every program is that way. I mean, you talk about the whining and dining of the recruiting process. That continues throughout the four years for a lot of these guys, and no one's really helping prepare them for what's next. What happens if you blow your knee? What happens if, you know, you, you go and yeah. you end up, you're a bust in the NBA, and now you can't play. And although, you know, there have been several very big, well-known players that have come through Villanova, Josh Hart being one of them, Jalen Brunson, you know, the list goes on and on, you know, it seems like it's more than just preparing you guys for the NBA or overseas, but also preparing you for, you know, what, all the things that could happen, you know, all the, the yes. steps that you could have to take next. So you getting into yeah. media and now being able to be yeah. on the other side of the camera in a different role, not as a player being interviewed, but now, you know, as a reporter, as a host, you know, talk to me about that journey into now having your own, your own network and your own show. It's, it's been fun. It's, I mean, I, quite frankly, it's something I always, I always knew I was going to do. You know, when I got there, okay. um, I always say this, coach, um, me going to Nova was as much as Coach Wright as it was, a professor named Hezekiah Lewis. And he has a production company called um, Ikaya Productions, named after his daughter. He focuses on Afrocentric films. He actually had a documentary class where the first semester they go abroad. So for my senior year when I was involved with the class, go to Johannesburg and, um, and uh, Cape Town. And they mm-hmm. shot a story on a young woman, and they come back, and in the second half of the semester, it's all the production. And you get to see real time as a student what it's like to put together a documentary. And quite frankly, the stress and the, the, uh, the hustle that goes into it, but I you can know, only imagine. that much more well <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Like, it is a lot. Like, you're dealing with a real movie budget and things like that. And it's great, and all of that is because of people who support the Lenovo. But anyway, um, so, yeah, it's been – I always I, – when I met with him on my visit, actually that same day I met with Coach Wright, I was like, all right, this is perfect. This is, this is what I – these are the two sides of the coin that I need. And I always thought I'd be doing this at 35, not 25. So that was kind of like a bit of a shock for me and kind of jumping into it head first the way that I did. But I didn't really have a choice. You know, like I said, I got hurt, and it was like, listen, there – the doctor who told me uh, – the doctor who read off my – my injury list to me straight up said, there is a chance you'll never play again. You know what I mean? Wow. I was just like, oh, okay. Like, he did great with sensitivity training. Thank you for walking me in. Yeah. That. But he, <laughs> he straight up told wow. me, like, you might not ever play again. Um, sugar and I appreciate him okay. keeping it real. It's just, yeah. yeah, I was about to say, he kept it real. He was like, damn, <laughs> God, he could have gave me a, a second day or two, you know. But he was honest, you know, and it was, it was the truth. There was a chance, and there still is a chance. You know, I really don't know. So to jump into this head first has been humbling. Humbling, I guess, is the first word I want to leave with because I definitely learned, you know, as an athlete, you learn that your confidence is your best friend, and I believe the same thing in media, but you also have a, have a sense of humility about you to understand that you don't know everything. But the beauty of it was I got to line up a lot of the mistakes I made in basketball and then apply it to media, and I think that's what's, uh, help the success uh, thus far, you know, just kind of leaning on, all right, last time I was in this situation, maybe it wasn't an interview for a company or maybe it wasn't, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a uh, a pitch for my production company. Maybe it was a tryout for a team and you made this mistake, that mistake, that mistake. Now, if you take that same knowledge and apply it to where you are now, you'll get over that hump, you know. And I looked at a lot of the things that happened in my basketball career as kind of a, a, a prep for where I'm at now because, quite frankly, I do believe that this is what I'm supposed to be doing even more than basketball. This is my calling more than anything. But, you know, I kind of had to go through some bumps and bruises with uh, basketball. And obviously a lot of rewards, but just bumps and bruises that 
I get to see now second time around, and it's like, it's helped. Like I said, it's been humbling. It's been fun as hell. I would never say this isn't fun. You know, I, I get to talk to people about sports and understand how their real emotions tie in with so much of who they are as an athlete, and it's, I'm, I'm having a blast with it. You know what I mean? Wow. You know what? I feel that personally because I always tell people that what drove me to become an all-American professional soccer player is the same thing that drives me as a reporter. You know, like the drive is still the same. It's just different kinds of work that you're doing. And I know, like, I also had injuries and things like that, and I also look back on my career and can look at the shortcomings and the ways that I maybe even wasn't as good as I could have been or whatever it may be. And now I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to do the same thing. And that's something that when you talk Mm -hmm. about, even in the beginning of this conversation, you mentioned how jobs are looking for student athletes. It's because of those exact exact things that you hit on. You know, you you know what it takes to be successful. You know what it takes to be on a winning team. You know what it takes, you know, to overcome adversity and and to push yourself and make your weaknesses your strengths, things like that. So that is something that not everybody understands because, you know, you've been a part of the grind of getting up early in the morning, having two days, three days, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, yeah. and just and pushing through all of it. So that, that is yeah. really incredible. And I, I see you're doing some great things, so I'm excited for you. So where can people follow uh, all that you you've well. got going on? Because you're everywhere, it seems like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, you know, which, which we want to distribute the show mostly digitally, so we're actually working on season two right now. It's funny, we actually shoot uh, every – we're going to shoot for the next six weeks every Tuesday – at seven thirty, um, uh, but they can follow me on the the page, Stay Tuned Network page on Instagram, as well as Twitter. We'll be releasing over Facebook, Watch, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Um, you know, you type in Stay Tuned with D-Ray on YouTube, and episodes will pop up. Uh, like I said, I want to I want to really start utilizing all the the digital platforms and the IGTVs mm-hmm. and the Facebook Watches of the world to kind of distribute the show. Uh, Philadelphia Sports Nation is a uh, site that I write for, and this season, although we're going to cover interviews, obviously visually, um, and release it over the podcast. Oh, yeah, sorry, the podcast is on Spotify (laughs) and Apple Music and Google. Uh, Stay tuned with D-Ray for the podcast, but I'm also going to start to write about it, too. You know, I've always had a passion for writing. Yeah, when I got to college, they wanted me to be an English major, and I was like, eh, I I need Eh. visuals behind it, too. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, 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 okay. it's just for me, I, I needed a bit more, but, you know, yeah. I was like, but I do, I do twice. love it, I do have a passion, I do have a passion for writing, and um, I'm going to write about the episode as well, you know, it's kind of, I feel like it turned into a lost art to kind of sit down and read an article, so it'll be featured on Philadelphia Sports Nation, um, and that's, that's pretty much it, that's pretty much it for right now. Awesome, sounds like you're also in the making of, who knows, writing your own book. You like writing? You've got a story to oh, tell. You've got a journey. You did I spoil it. anything? Yes. I did. Yes, 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 yes. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I, I didn't know how to segue it to it. Uh, but yeah, I'm writing a book. It's gonna. I'm gonna write eight books. Um, oh, you're really writing a book right now. Inside. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm so. Well, I already have one done. Uh, yeah, we're trying oh, okay. to figure out. I obviously have to. Yeah, I got. I, I have to figure out. It's like I'm, it's funny. I'm learning different games now. I have to figure out the publishing and the. The distribution game of being an author, but um, eight books. I've written one. I guess I guess to be fair, one and a half. Um, none of them are going to be alike or the same necessarily. They're all going to kind of tackle different things. But uh, over the next, I can't put a date on that. Over the next, let's mm. say, couple decades, I'm going to be releasing eight <laughs> books. I'm looking. I'm trying to get one out this next year. The one I'm most excited about. It's kind of like autobiography slash self help. Um, mm, okay. But stay tuned for that. Yeah, yeah, but stay tuned for that. I, I can't. There you go. I knew it. I was getting author vibes, too, as you are talking about how you enjoy writing and how you, I mean, your story in general is something, you know, one to tell. So, all right, lot, like I said, you got a lot going on, which is always a good thing. Staying busy and, and uh, constantly on your grind, that's always a good thing. So thank you so much for joining me on Beyond the Headlines with Renee Washington this week. It has been a pleasure. I knew it was going to be good once, you know, once you agreed to come on, I wanted to definitely hear your perspective about Villanova and then all that you're doing. So thank you so much. No, thank you for having me on. Thank you for having me on. And, and thank you for, for understanding. You know, I, I love when I see athletes, you know, take the time to understand both sides and really appreciate both sides. So thank you for, for keeping that vision 
And definitely, please keep this. This is a great show. This is this is one of the more uh, therapeutic interviews I've done. So thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. No problem. <laughs>